This video will be talking about gateway and DNS. But before we get to that, let's kind of recap what we went over last video. Uh, on the last video, of course, we went uh, talked about MS-DOS. Uh, we talked about the Windows flag button in R, which opens the run command. So if we just touch the Windows flag, which is in the lower left-hand corner of the keyboard between Control and Alt, we touch that and touch the R at the same time. It brings up this run dialog box. Of course, then we can type in CMD and we hit enter or OK and that brings up our Windows or MS-DOS prompt or command prompt, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we put that, uh, we're going to put that up here out of the way a little bit. So uh, the next thing we had uh, is IP config all. So we type that in IP config forward slash all and we hit enter and that gives us all our network settings we need to scroll back up here till we get Ethernet adapter local area connection that's where all our information is here and then we talked about our IP address which is uh, here on this computer is 192.168.0.200 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255 and if you remember these 255's literally lock in or mask out uh, the first octet, the second octet, and the third octet here, wherever 255 is, so this is our network address. And so anything that's going to talk on this network would require a 192.168.0. something. And this zero down here in the subnet um, actually allows this number to be anywhere from 1 to 255. So um, that kind of gives an overview. Uh, the other thing we did talk about was the ping command, which just communicates, uh, checks communication with the device on the network. So we're going to ping our gateway. Uh, so ping uh, 192.168, oops, .168.0.1. We hit enter, and we're going to reply from there. So we know we do have communication with the gateway address, if you notice the gateway was right up here 192.168.0.1 so we do have communication with it uh, so that kind of gives kind of a recap or overview of uh, what we did with our first video and now let's get into this video and the first thing we're going to talk about in this video is the gateway and the gateway or sometimes they call it the actual router it actually connects you to the internet or to two different subnets. So if you see the example down here, uh, I have this subnet or this network is the 192.168.1.network and this network over here is a 209.199 network because you notice the 255s again are locking this in or masking out this network. Now this is a little bit different network over here because we have a zero here and a zero here. Uh, so we could actually, you know, have anywhere from the one to 255 here or the one to 255 here. Now, so that would give us many more devices. Uh, 255 times 255, which I think is around 16 million devices that could be on this 209.199 network. So quite a few more devices uh, on the network. Uh, so, and this is a picture of um, my router. I have a home router, but small businesses would have a very similar router like this also. Um, and so, but most of the network devices anymore, just like our multifunction copiers, do have web interface pages uh, that allow configuration. So let's take a look at this web interface page of this router right here real quick. Let me bring over the web browser and let's type in the gateway address which is the 192.168.0.1 and hit enter. So here's the web page of my router. Let me go ahead and log in. So I've got logged in here. Um, now if you remember uh, we talked about right here that this connects uh, you to the internet are two different subnets. Um, so let's look at this router. If I click on the status here, this shows the IP address uh, that the router has. 
uh, and it's hooked to it's getting this IP address from Comcast. So you can tell this is uh, this has a 255, 255, 240, which we've not discussed uh, the 240 part, and we'll probably discuss that at a later time. But you can see that this is a completely different uh, network than our local network. So if I go over here to the setup. I can see my network settings for my local network, which uh, is the 192.168.0. something. So, uh, and you notice that is my router IP address. Um, so you also notice my router does DHCP, which we'll talk about in another lesson, and my router also uh, does DNS, uh, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit later. Um, so that's pretty much for pretty much it for the router piece. So let me go ahead and minimum's window and get it out of the way. So that gives you kind of an idea of what the uh, router does. Um, but I did also want to show you what what happens if I take the router address out, or I actually we accidentally let's say we're configuring one of our devices in the field and we type in the router address wrong. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring up a window over here on my second screen. You guys won't be able to see it. Um, but I'm going to change this. and I, I'm just going to do it over here. We're going to talk about this in a later video. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change my default gateway to 192.168.1.1 so it's outside of the actual um, network address or network a segment that I'm on. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to do Windows R and bring up my run command and I'm going to hit enter so I get this uh, my command prompt window back up. So I'm typing in IP config so we can look at forward slash all the router address or the gateway address which is they're interchangeable terms. So I hit that, I scroll back up to my local Ethernet adapter local area connection, and you notice now my default gateway, I've changed it so it's outside of my network. Because if you remember, these have to be 192.168 has to be um, .0 because of the 255 series. Well, that's .1, so that now this computer will not be able to communicate with this router. So let's see what happens if I bring my web interface page back over here and I try to communicate with let's say copiers.toshiba.com and I hit enter. So it's just sitting there, it's sitting there, of course uh, copiers.toshiba.com is going to be out on the internet somewhere and it's not going to be inside my network so that it has to have that router to get out to the internet and so it's just sitting there and it can't find it at all. Uh, so we're going to stay here probably three or four more minutes before it times out. So I'm just going to time it out here myself and move this out of the way. So that kind of gives you an idea of what would happen uh, if we accidentally typed in the wrong gateway. Now how would that affect us if we were out uh, setting up a, um, a, a let's say, an a SMTP server or an e scanned email? Uh, of course, if we were on their same network, like right here, if their email server was internal and it had a 192.168.1 address, it wouldn't affect it at all. But if their email server happened to be out on the internet and we typed the gateway in wrong, we would get failure after failure after failure. So that kind of gives you an idea of how that might affect us. And, and uh, like I said before in the last video, we're going to talk about SMTP and how to configure our multifunction units in a whole separate video all on its own. So I just want to give you a general concept here in this video. So that gives you an idea of what the gateway does. So now let's go over here and talk about domain name system or DNS. That's what uh, everybody will call it is the DNS. And DNS just converts the names to IP addresses. For instance, if we have um, copiers.toshiba.com um, it will convert that to 63.241.31.21 so if in fact um, uh, I need to come back over here and change my gateway back to the right setting before I can show you this next example so let me go ahead and change that back real quick here 
hit OK and close that out. Um, so now I was going to show you um, how I actually got this, how I found out what the copiers.toshiba.com IP address is. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my Windows button and I'm going to hit the R that bring up my run command box, type in the CMD, hit enter, and here's my Windows, uh, my command prompt window, and I'm going to ping the uh, copiers dot Toshiba dot com and I'm going to hit enter and you notice that it pinged and when it did that it actually pinged that ping command it sent that to the DNS server and the DNS server returned this IP address so now you notice here's the two there's 63 241 31 21 so that is the IP address of copiers.toshiba.com now I'm going to go over here on my other window and I'm going to remove the DNS address in my uh, on my computer here so just take me a minute I will open this up go to properties and again we're going to talk about this the actually configuring how you configure the IP address of a computer at a later date so I just want to go ahead and and do this off off-site um, Sorry about that. I uh, typed in an invalid address and I wanted to just erase it. So uh, I did it again. Let me see if I can get a get to going better here. So I mean I'm having some trouble here. I think I'm okay. I think I'm all right now. Sorry about that you'll just learn that I'm not perfect in this video. Uh, <laughs> the uh, So I'm going to hit OK. So that got rid of my DNS address. So let me go ahead and uh, let's type in ipconfig here and hit enter. So now you'll notice if I go back up again to my um, my actual Oops, I went a little too far there. Um, yeah, right here to my local area connection. Now I have a subnet mask as a default gateway, but I don't have a DNS address at all. There's not been one configured. So let's take a look and see how that actually affects um, going to the web, going to the internet. So if I go in here now and I bring up a new window and I type in copiers toshiba.com boom it can't find it because it, it initially just sends that request that name out to the DNS server if there's no DNS server there it cannot find the name but if you remember I found out what the IP address is of that and so if I type in 63.241.31.21 which is the actual IP address of copiers.toshiba.com and I hit enter it didn't need the DNS server for that because it just went directly to copiers.toshiba.com and boom, it brought the web page up. So that gives you kind of an idea of what DNS does uh, and you know how would that affect us uh, uh, configuring some of our equipment out in the field. Well, if we're trying to find a name, uh, if we put it in the SMTP server and we're trying to find the name and we don't have a proper DNS server in there, it's going to it's going to fail just like it did there um, and again we'll talk more about we're going to ne our next video in fact is going to be about uh, scan to email so we'll talk about that and uh, go a little more in depth uh, with that on our next video so hope that was helpful to you and I'll be posting this up on the web with the other one so that you guys can uh, look at it at uh, your leisure okay thanks a lot